In today's video, we're going to talk about pivots Pivot! in Blender. I'm Luciano and welcome to the adventures of Lollipop Man. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by me. Use the code below to get 10% discount on any of my products. What's up everyone? Today, I'm going to show you how to use the pivots in the 3D view to pose your character and the pivots in the 2D animation editors like the graph editor and the dope sheet to handle your keyframes. So <laughs> remember to like and subscribe and let's get on it. The pivots are here. This defines which type of pivot you're using when you're handling anything. So you have the boundary box center, which is for instance, if I select any number of objects, these objects create like a virtual box and then the pivot is in the center of it. So for instance, if I select this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and that guy, and using the boundary box center, you're gonna see that the pivot goes to the middle. Like we can see the pivot by selecting any of this and that's the pivot of the selection. So if I rotate this, you can see it's rotating around that little point right there, right? Like that point that we pointed before. The reason the hands are rotating on top of that is because they're children of the torso, so they're getting double rotations. But in, in any case, they're all still rotating from that center, right? So for instance, if you want to grab the character and you have the root there, you'd normally start your character with the position with this root but then at some point, if you want to rotate it, but you need to keep the root at the same place, you can use something like this, the bounding box center. Then we're going to jump over to the 3D cursor, which is my personal favorite, which is that little thing right there, which you can select with that tool and you can click anywhere and it will place it in the world, right? And so if you go back and you, you click right now, it doesn't ha nothing happens, but you press shift and right click, and then you can place it again. Why is it helpful? For instance, if I change to 3D cursor, and then let's say I want to pivot the foot from there, I can place it there, right? And now I can rotate from there or I can shift click and place it there and now rotate from there. So in a, in a rig that doesn't have every single pivot, you can use it to fake certain stuff. For instance, uh, let's say this arm, it's an, it's an IK arm. If I push the 3D cursor there and then switch, now I can rotate it from there. And so I can fake an, an FK arm while still maintaining the IK arm which is kind of cool, right? And so this serves always to fake or to pivot when you don't have a pivot, right? I can, for instance, select this guy here and then these two guys here. And now I want to pivot from that point on the head and I can do that for whatever reason you may need, right? I can, same thing. I can put it here now and I can pivot from there or I can put it here now and I can put pivot from there and so on. Now, bear in mind, you'll need more keyframes because you don't have the proper pivot, but this works. Then we have individual origins. And so individual origins will pick up every origin from every object. So in this case, we have three objects selected. And if I start rotating, you see now each one of them rotates on, it, on their own origin. And I can have, for instance, these guys do that too, right? Uh, why is it useful? For instance, things like if I go to here, right, and I will display the other bones, the other controllers, each one of these ones moves on their own. Yeah, if I have any other sort of uh, pivot, right, and I select the two or three of them, they're going to move based on basically whatever is the, the commanding bone because they're connected. And so when they're connected, Blender doesn't take the other bones into account for the rotations unless you go and tell it to use individual origins when where it will, will roll them, right? 
which is kind of nice. This one is most useful when you have several FK controllers. Then medium point, it's similar to the bounding box center, but the difference is the bounding box center will take into consideration each object and the medium point will so we'll we'll put it here right and then we and the medium point will kind of trace it and say okay so the midpoint is actually here right so we'll give you a slight difference i rarely use that one to be honest uh, so if i select this guy or actually let's say, select something like this you see the pivot is there if I change it to bounding box center, it's there because that's the, the box that it's generating. And the medium point kind of just locks it to the to the midpoint between the origins of each one of them. Not much of a big deal. And then the active element is one that can be very useful as well. For instance, let's say I want to move these two guys again and the torso, but then I want to pivot on the torso. I can just go active element. And because it was the last one selected, and you can see it's slightly brighter, then it will rotate from there, right? Or I can make sure that this one is the last one selected. Now that's the active one, but now I can rotate from there, right? So that helps, again, selecting a bunch of controllers and being able to rotate from one of them, it's quite useful. And so that will help you with posing faster things because you don't need to be carrying each controller and knowing how this works it makes a whole lot of a difference on top of this just know that the hotkey for this is the dot in the keyboard right and so you get all of these options right here and then there's this extra option which doesn't belong here but it is useful as well to know that it's there only location <laughs> So that will only affect the locations of the object selected. In this case, for instance, I have these four balls. And if I, if I scale, they all scale and also like get together, right? And if I rotate, they also rotate. If I go into turn on that option and then scale them, as you can see now, because it's not affecting the scale or the rotation what it's doing it's separating the distance between the origins of each object right so look at that and because we're using the pivot point active element it's doing it towards that one this option it's affected by the pivot configuration that you have which is kind of cool in the graph editor this is much simpler because we have only two axes so this is the 2d cursor which is in X, it's the time, and in Y, it's the value. You can see those numbers if you press the end panel right here. You get this slider here, and then you get this slider here, which control both of them. If I press Shift, right click, just like in the 3D view, you can place it wherever you want, right? Now, Let's look at how does it work with keyframes. You can see here, I have only three options. We should have a fourth one at some point because now there's a, the active keyframe as well. So you, we would be able to do pivoting from the active keyframe. But for now, we have only bounding box center, which doesn't matter where the cursor is. It will again, draw a box around all of the keyframes and then put a point in the middle, in the middle of that box. And now you can use it to rotate, translate, or scale your keyframes from that point. You can also change it to 2D cursor and then place this guy wherever you want and then use it as a point of scaling. If I do exactly the same, but now I press X, it will only do it in the X axis. And then if I do the same and press Y, it will do it in the Y axis, right? And finally, we get also the individual centers which for the moving, it will move just as usual. For rotation, it will rotate each one of the keyframes uh, on their own pivots. And then for scaling, it will also do the same. And if you go into the top sheet, for instance, or other editors like these ones, you, you don't have the options because really it only does it to the cursor. And so if I scale now, you see it's scaling from there. 
If I put it here, it scales from there. If I put it here, it scales from there. And that's it. So I hope this helps your workflow so you become faster and more effective. And let me know in the comments below if you have any other tips that I've missed there. Remember to like and subscribe and see me next time. <music>